The program of Central Asian Regional Economic Cooperation is now entering a new level. In November 2018, at a conference in Turkmenistan, the current countries adopted a new trade program. It will become a roadmap for more open trade relations within the region, reduction of bureaucratic barriers, diversification of exports and national economies through the development of services and digitalization of trade. Together with the 2030 trade program, an action plan upon it was adopted until the year 2020. According to the president of the Asian Development Bank, Taihe Kiko Nakao, the state of the economy and trade in the Karak region is improving. Excluding the Chinese statistics, the economic growth in the region reached 3.5% in 2016 and exceeded 4.5% in 2017. In his opinion, the growth rate in 2018, though not significantly, will grow. The current economy reacted painfully to the economic stresses of recent years. As a result, not a high growth rate. However, it is recovering in many ways faster than other regional economies. Most of the countries have very strong trade relations with China. Financial implementation of the current 2030 strategy is most actively supported by the Asian Development Bank. So until 2022, the organization will invest $5 billion to the region. Of course, trade and electricity are not the only areas of cooperation within the CAREC. The new strategy 2030 also covers water resources, agriculture, tourism, healthcare and education, virtually all social areas. When the program was established uh, um, uh, 17 years ago, it was made a deliberate choice of focusing on infrastructure as well as trade policy and trade facilitation. Infrastructure, namely two areas of infrastructure, transport and energy. Together with uh, member countries, also international institutions, development partners such as the Asian Development Bank, the World Bank, the European Bank for Reconstruction and Development, EBRD, UNDP, United Nations Development Program, and the IMF uh, decided to join. Um, Karek. Today, Karek countries are five republics of Central Asia Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, Turkmenistan, Uzbekistan, and Tajikistan, as well as Georgia, Azerbaijan, Mongolia, Afghanistan, Pakistan, and the trade giant China. In other words, about one tenth of the globe. By 2018, this large regional project includes more than 150 small ones in excess of 30 billion US dollars. These projects are mostly not global but regional. They help to establish interaction between two specific countries. And uh, if you look at the results of CAREC in the area of transport, energy, trade policy, trade facilitation, you may be amazed that uh, over the few years overall, you know, 17, not yet 18 years, more than 30 billion US dollars have been invested in these two sectors mostly because trade policy, trade facilitation are more uh, like uh, soft, as we call it, uh, infrastructure. Um, out of this, the total number until 2017, the exact figure is 31.6 billion US dollars, one third almost of which, 11 billion of which were directly invested by uh, the Asian Development Bank. Asian Development Bank being a regional bank uh, for, for ADB, regional cooperation and integration, is a core activity that defines its status and its role uh, in the region. Therefore, for ADB, promoting regional cooperation and integration is an extremely important uh, uh, objective of our mandate in the region. Global financial institutions believe that regional cooperation has future. All current countries face with similar problems. Remoteness from large markets, large requirements for financing of transport infrastructure and maintenance costs, dependence on the export of natural resources. It is easier to solve problems jointly. The long-term vision of the program is good neighbors, good partners, good prospects.
Kazakhstan is destined to become one of the current centers geographically, since the priority for the program is the development of trade, transport, infrastructure, energy, and trade policy. And in fact, Kazakhstan links all current countries by these factors. With regard to Kazakhstan, uh, regional cooperation and integration program have been uh, very successful because uh, Kazakhstan being so central uh, to the region and so in need uh, and, and performing such an important role in terms of physical connectivity uh, linking East Asia with, with Europe, transport uh, connectivity through uh, CAREX, through Central Asia, uh, regional economic cooperation have been really very much active uh, and they have allowed uh, bringing markets and investment together uh, supporting the economy of Kazakhstan over the several over the past uh, few years. A total of 15 CARIC projects are being implemented in Kazakhstan today. Most of them are connected with strategically important transport corridors. Since 2011, about $7 billion has been invested in the transport, trade and energy sectors. The Karak project includes six transport corridors. The most significant of these, Karak 1, links Europe with China and East Asia. The corridor runs from the border with the Russian Federation to China via Kazakhstan and Kyrgyzstan. It includes more than 13 and a half thousand kilometers of roads and 12,000 kilometers of railways, one logistic center and three airports. Three of the six corridors pass through the territory of Kazakhstan. The transportation corridors themselves are not the end product of the program. When they are created, they will have to meet the needs of their users, improve infrastructure and simplify trade procedures. All this entails a change in the standard of living of the local population. Kazakhstan is not only favorably located in the heart of Eurasia, it also established itself as a country ready to support the initiatives of neighbors and offer a worthy one. Experts believe that the country simultaneously belongs to both the East and the West. It has a religious community with Islamic states and Turkic language, historical roots and psychological characteristics of the national spirit which determine its belonging to the East. However, the country also belongs to the West since the Euro identity of the Republic is determined by factors of a demographic and political character, the nature of the construction of a secular state. Due to this, as well as the multi-vector policy, Astana could become a dialect platform for solving many economic and political issues. Astana is truly a site open to Europe, Asia and the Middle East and the world in general. And when such serious issues are resolved here, like Syrian conflicts for example, we can say that Kazakhstan today acts as a peace-loving country, which wants to do its own good to all other countries, especially those being in conflicts. This, above all, probably is the President's merit, who directly offers the Astana site for settling certain issues. Same Iranian nuclear deal. This is really a big move in politics. The non-proliferation of nuclear weapons in the world and the peaceful use of the atom is the first initiative of Kazakhstan with which the country declared itself internationally when closed the Semipalatinsk nuclear test site. Today, Kazakhstan continues to promote these initiatives. Это атомная энергетика, это производство радиоизотопов. This is nuclear power. This is the production of radioisotopes that are needed for nuclear medicine for agriculture and for industry. Another additional is the use of radiation exposure to obtain new materials with desired properties, which have unique properties and expands our technological capabilities. These are the studies in the field of nuclear physics. Radiation material management is also the main activity of our institute. 
In 2017, the Institute held three major international conferences that brought together more than 300 scientists from 20 countries of the world. This underlines the importance of Kazakh research and the fact that for serious achievements in science, specialists must share their experience and work together. Today, all countries participate in certain economic associations. This is due to the emergence of new issues, solution of which requires enhanced cooperation and unification of the forces of a group of states. The active integration centers in the developing world are Latin America, Africa, the Middle East and Asia. Already during the 60s and 70s, about 20 regional associations were created here. At the same time, the Latin American Institute for Integration was established, which trains professional personnel for the sphere. Today, there are such regional associations as Mercosur, Common Market of the South, LIA, Latin American Integration Association, and CARICOM, Caribbean Community in the Region. Integration processes in Africa have begun to develop on the basis of sharing of natural resources, for example, seven organizations for the joint exploitation of river basins. African theorists promoted the idea of self-reliance and independence from developed countries. In support of this concept, in 1991, an agreement was signed on the African Economic Community, or FEC. In 2017, the Central Asian Regional Economic Cooperation Institute was opened in Urumqi as part of the Karag program. The Karag countries approved the initiative of the Chinese side to make it an international intergovernmental organization and held multi-round consultations on this issue. The institute has a governing board which will appoint and dismiss managerial personnel and the positions of director of the institute and his two deputies. This platform was created primarily for joint research and knowledge sharing. The Asian Development Bank is trying to establish ties in the region primarily through the creation and reconstruction of highways. Transport corridors run along the major trade flows and are designed to increase the speed of movement of people and goods through the region. They also connect current countries, most of which are landlocked, with broad regional and global networks. For example, a section of the Western Europe Western China Road in the Jambul region was reconstructed. As a result, not only the quality of the road improved, but also about 6,000 jobs were created. Several more projects have been completed. As part of these 1,200 kilometers of completed projects, we've also reconstructed the Aktau Beine Road. As a result of its completion, the wait time was reduced from 12 hours to 6 hours thereby increasing the economic activity of the region, as well as transit flows. One uh, concrete example of um, recent uh, program on regional cooperation that we've been promoting is the so-called economic corridor between Almaty and Bishkek. The Asian Development Bank has been promoting uh, sectors such as agriculture, such as uh, health, such as tourism uh, to reinvigorate uh, these economic activities and we've been supporting, uh, for example, the establishment of um, um, uh, agriculture in the agricultural sector of wholesale market infrastructure for, um, for uh, dairy products, for uh, horticulture and meat. In the future, the ADB is considering the creation of another economic corridor, tashkent Shimkent. The distance between the two cities is only 100 kilometers and annually more than 9 million people cross the border there and in terms of prospects for economic interdependence, this uh, economic corridor between uh, Tashkent and Shimkent is very, um, you know, uh, it's a very prominent area for promoting regional cooperation and integration. And Asian Development Bank is a leading uh, international financial institution supporting uh, strengthening of regional economic cooperation for Kazakhstan. 
Kazakhstan itself is involved in solving the problems of the Central Asian region. One of the most important is the issue of water security. Most of the water resources in the region are shared by countries. As a result, some regions are already experiencing water shortages. Over the past few years, all Central Asian states have been focused on the joint development of relevant solutions. At all these meetings, water security issues have come to the fore. It was clearly said that we need to move from general declarative words to deeds. We need to figure out how to provide water to those parts of the region where it is lacking, how to save the water that we lose in huge quantities, how the interests of hydropower energy and agriculture can be linked together and try not to divide water as such, namely, to do so, that the benefits of water will be shared equally. Another important regional trend in Central Asian countries was the course towards digitalization. The state program Digital Kazakhstan is working in Kazakhstan. Uzbekistan is also expected to launch a similar one, including regional projects on the development of digitalization. In connection with this trend, many areas are changing, in particular education. In regions such as Central Asia, where you have so many young people, um, 50 to 60 percent of the population are young people, so we need to make sure that uh, uh, the professional education that um, many of these people, uh, students acquire, that, is, that it is of quality and that it also corresponds to market expectations and requirements. Because we, we sometimes hear that, uh, that representatives from different sectors of industries feel that the, the um, students, uh, that the, uh, the skills and knowledge that uh, they, they get uh, after graduating from the uh, TVET uh, or professional schools are not enough for them to immediately start uh, their um, employment and uh, professional careers. So this is why it's, uh, I would specifically like to also mention the importance of quality of professional education. The tourism industry is considered as no less effective for cooperation. Communication of countries through tourism is a promising direction. But in terms of future programming, I, I would like to mention uh, a very exciting new project that we will start. And this uh, uh, concerns uh, common heritage on the Silk Roads. This is a, um, a large-scale uh, project that we, um, we um, will work on in all Central Asian countries plus Afghanistan and Iran. And it actually uh, looks at tangible and intangible cultural heritage and try to under, tries to understand and identify the um, uh, common heritage. The purpose of the new project is to study in detail the Silk Road, religions, traditions and inventions that it brought to the countries around as it developed the region culturally. New knowledge will help to create new tourist brands and attract more tourists from all over the globe to Central Asia in general and to Kazakhstan in particular. Kazakhstan uh, is a very ambitious country and uh, we do very much support the ambition of Kazakhstan uh, in the region and uh, in, in Asia in general. Uh, because Kazakhstan is aware that uh, prosperity within Kazakhstan uh, very much depends on prosperity within the region. 2019 will be the year of Kazakhstan in Uzbekistan. As part of it, many activities are planned. Also, the two republics are rapidly increasing trade. By 2020, they plan to increase the volume of mutual trade to $5 billion. Uzbekistan plans to enter the European market with its products through the sea gates of Kazakhstan. And recently, countries have agreed on the mutual recognition of visas. That is, foreign tourists who have visited Kazakhstan can enter Uzbekistan without difficulty and vice versa.